Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at what we call other normal distributions. Now, it's actually a continuation of what we did in the previous video, where we were finding probabilities using the standard uh, distribution table. So if you haven't watched that video, you want to make sure that you do that, because otherwise some of the stuff that we're going to be doing in this video is going to be a little bit more complicated and harder to understand. Now in that previous video, what we were doing is we were, again, finding probabilities based on the z-score, which represents the number of standard deviations either above or below the mean. And we would take that z-score and use that table to find that probability. But they gave us the z-scores. In this video, or in this lesson, that's not what's going to happen. They're not going to give us the z-score. We have to figure out what is that value for our z-score. In other words, how far above or below the mean is that information. So to get that value for our z-score, we're going to use this formula. Now in this formula, x represents whatever the number is that we're trying to figure out how far above or below the mean it would be, how many standard deviations above or below the mean it would be. And so that's your value for x. So we're going to subtract from that value what the mean is and divide by the standard deviation. Now we call this process, to my left here, we call this the stand, or standardizing the variable. Um, now it's important to understand too, which you can't really see because it's kind of behind me here, but it's important to make sure that you understand that this whole process can only be used when we are dealing with a a situation where it's normally distributed. Now in a future video we're going to be looking at how we determine whether or not we have enough trials, whether or not we have enough information to be able to say it's normally distributed. But for all these problems they're going to tell us that it indeed will be normally distributed. Well, Let's look at an example so you can see how we're going to be using this formula uh, for the standardization theorem. So here it says, the heights of adult Dutch males are normally distributed with a mean height of 183 centimeters and a standard deviation of 6.7 centimeters. Now you might recognize this example is from the very first lesson from this chapter, Lesson 11.1. But here it says, if an adult Dutch male is selected randomly, what is the probability that the mean, I'm sorry, that the man is less than 188 centimeters tall? So recall this formula that uh, we're talking about in this section, the, the standardization theorem, which gives us the z-score. Because in order for us to find the probability, we need to figure out what the z-score would be so we can use that uh, standard uh, distribution table. So the formula we're going to use, remember, is x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Well, they tell us here in the first sentence that the mean is 183 centimeters. And the standard deviation is 6.7 centimeters. Now we're trying to figure out where it's going to be less than 188 centimeters tall. How many standard deviations, in other words, is 188 centimeters above the mean? So to figure that out, we're going to replace x with 188. Now 188 minus 183 would be 5. And then 5 divided by 6.7 is approximately 0.75. And it's important to round these to the nearest hundreds place. So here's what we're trying to find. We're trying to find that the probability that a man is going to be point, less than 0.75 standard deviations above the mean. So this would be where z is less than 0.75. So to give a visual as far as what's going on here, let's say this is 0.75 about here. We want to find the area underneath that line, which is going to be this entire section. And that is where the table is going to come in. So we're going to look at that table. And what we do is we look for 0.75. I'm going to scroll up here. So here's 0.7. And here's where 100's place is 5. And so our value at that point is 0.7734. And so that would be our answer. Now the way that we can interpret this answer is this. So we could say that 77.3% about 
of our, uh, so about 77.3% of Dutch males are less than 188 centimeters tall. That's how we can interpret that answer. Let's look at another example. Here it says a machine fills bags with popcorn. If the bags are underfilled, there will be complaints from customers. If the bags are overfilled, they cannot be closed and sealed by the next machine in the production line. The bag states that there are seven ounces in a bag. The company has chosen to fill each bag with eight ounces of popcorn on average. Assume the quantity of popcorn in each bag is normally distributed with the standard deviation of 0.6 ounces. So what percent of the bags are likely to be under the stated weight of seven ounces? Because as a business owner, I want to make sure that my customers are happy. So if I know that there's going to be a chance that some, peop that some bags are going to get underfilled, um, and I know that some customers that are not going to be happy, I want to make sure that I'm comfortable with this percent. So I want to figure out what percent of customers basically wouldn't be happy. What percent of bags are going to be um, less than the stated weight of 7 ounces? So to figure that out, we first have to figure out what our z-score is. So we want to figure out how many standard deviations above, or in this case below the mean, our 7 ounces is. We're going to take 7 minus our average, which is 8 ounces, divided by your standard deviation, which is 0 0.6. When we do that, we get negative 1.67. So we're trying to find the probability that the, that value z is going to be less than negative 1.67 because we're looking for that it's going to be under the stated weight of 7 ounces. So 7 ounces is 1.67 standard deviations below the mean, so we want to find the probability that's going to be less than that. Now the way that we're going to do that is we're going to look at our table, and we're going to first figure out, well, where is 1.67? So if I look at a visual here, so here's where negative 1.67 would be approximately. So we're looking for this area here. Now our table doesn't give us our value, a negative value, but remember what we talked about from the previous video is that I could reflect that over the line of symmetry and it would be the same as this section over here. So in other words, if I find my answer for a positive 1.67, that's going to give me the shaded region to the left of that line which I could subtract from 1, and that would give me the shaded region that I'm looking for. So on my table, 1.67, so here's 1.6, here's where it's 7, so I get 0.9525. So that tells me that this section here is 0.9525. Well, to figure out this section, I would take 1 minus 0.9525. And when you do that, you get your answer which would be 0 0.0475. Or you could round this to be about 4.8%. So I know that 4.8% of my bags would be underweight, meaning that 4.8% of my cat customers will not be happy. Now, if a manager purchases empty bags now that can hold 10 ounces fully filled, then what proportion would be filled over capacity? Because my goal as a business owner is to make sure that my product is getting out as soon as possible. Well, if the bag gets overfilled, it's going to jam the next machine, it's not going to be able to seal it, so it's going to slow down production. So I want to make sure that doesn't happen. So let's say now I increase the size of a bag now to be one that would hold 10 ounces, but we're still going to fill it to be on average the same amount, 8 ounces, to minimize the chance that it's going to get overfilled. So to find my z-score, I'm going to take that 10 ounces, that 10 ounce bag, subtract it from my 8 ounce average, divided by 0.6, and when you do that on your calculator, we get 3.33. So now this time, we're going to do this a little different. We're going to take and figure this out from our graphing calculators. But this time, we're trying to figure out what's the probability that's going to get overfilled. So the probability that's going to be more than 3.33. So from our calculator, so if you get those out, we're going to go to a calculator screen. When you're at a calculator screen, go to menu, go to probability, and then distributions. And we want to look for the normal CDF. Now, we want to, for right now, even though I want to figure out the probability that's going to be greater than 3.33, 
If I first figure out the probability that it's less than that, I can subtract that answer from 1. So this means that our lower bound, it's going to go infinitely in the negative direction. So we're going to leave that. And then our upper bound, we're going to set to be at 3.33. We're going to leave the mean, because you might think, well, wait a minute, the mean isn't that at 8 ounces, so don't have to change that to 8. Well, remember, we're fitting this data to our normal standard curve, so it's going to be where the mean is 0 and the standard deviations are going up by 1. So we're just going to hit Enter, OK. And so we get our answer. We'll round this to 0.999. We can round that 5 up to a 6 then. So the probability that z is going to be greater than that, remember this answer here is where it's less than 3.33. So if I subtract that from 1, I get 0.0004 is my answer. So about 4 hundredths of a percent of the bags are going to be overfilled. So that's a pretty good, pretty slim chance. So a good chance that I'm not going to have to run into problems here. So that would be, as a business owner, that would be a good decision to increase the size of the bag to 10 ounces. Now, if I want to figure out what proportion of bags would contain between 7 and 10 ounces of popcorn, I'm going to use my information from the previous answers. Because for this one, remember 10 ounces is one that we just did. That's got a z-score of about 3.33. And remember, my 7-ounce bags had a z-score of negative 1.67. So I'm trying to figure out the probability that it's going to be between, uh, or what the probability would be between 7 and 10 ounces. So I'm looking for the probability between these values. So I'm going to use the answers that I got. So we just got the answer for 3.33 with our calculator of 0.9996. We're going to subtract from that the probability, or the um, z-score, or the probability that we got with a z-score of negative 1.67, which was 0 0.0475. So when I subtract those two values, that's going to give me the area between them. Because remember, the 0 0.0475 represents this area. The 0 0.9995 represented everything from the left of 3.33 all the way down to negative infinity. So we want to subtract those two values to get the area between these two lines. So when you do that, we get our final answer of 0.9521. So in other words, that means about 95.21% of my bags, about 95% of my bags would be right where I want them, where they're not going to be overfilled and they're not going to be um, less than 7 ounces where my customers will not be happy. Let's look at this last one. This last one says, if a manager decides that at most 1% of bags should be overfilled, then what should be the capacity of the bag used in the packaging process? In other words, in this problem, we're looking for x. We're looking for the size of the bag that should be used. So I want to go back to my formula for my z-scores. Whoops. So we're going to take the x, which we're trying to find, Subtract that from the mean and divide that by the standard deviation, and that'll give us the z-score. So in other words, I want to start by figuring out, well, what z-score gives me where it's going to be at most 1%. Well, having at most 1% is the same as being less than 99% or 0 0.9900. So if I look at my table, I want to find where in this table I get closest to 0.99. Zero, zero. Well, I don't see it yet, so if I scroll down here, here we go. 0 0.9901 is the closest I'm going to get here from on this table. So that's where x is going to be 2.3. And if I look at my top column here, it's going to be at 2.33. So my z-score, rather, is going to be 2.33. Our value for our mean is still going to be 8, and our value for our standard deviation is still going to be 0.6. So now I'm just going to solve this equation. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 0.6. And when we do that, 2 times, or 0.6 times 2.33 gives us 1.398.
And that's going to equal on the right side. These would cancel each other out, leaving us with x minus 8. If I add 8 to both sides, I would get 9.398. Or I could just round this to 9.4 ounce bags. So as a business owner, if I knew that I wanted to have at most 1% of the bags being overfilled, I'd want to use bags that were sized at 9.4 ounces. Well, that's it. That is the end for this lesson. So hopefully now you have a better idea of how to use, or how to find z-scores and how to find those, or how, once we find those z-scores, how to use them to find the probability. So with that, good luck now as you work on your assignments.